and a pleasant good evening to you and yours, and welcome to the Brevard Sports Network and our continuing coverage of Brevard County Prep Baseball. Tonight we've got a doozy of a matchup for you. At least history says it will be. The Vieira Hawks and the Melbourne Bulldogs. All these two teams have done the last ten times they've gotten together is win five apiece. No team has won two in a row since the Bulldogs last did so in 2018. Let's give you the starting lineups for our game tonight. Brought to you by w and j construction and anchor plumbing for the Vieira hawks leading off and playing center field jack malatino batting second and playing left field mr five for five with six rbis last night the navy commit luke campbell batting third catcher alex sosa batting fourth pitcher lucas glendenning batting fifth first baseman fano cruz batting sixth shortstop Adriel Torres batting seventh and in right field tonight will be Ryan Lewis batting eighth and playing third base will be Cameron Simpkins and getting the start and a big one here tonight the sophomore number nine Dominic Leone bats ninth and he'll be at second base for the Melbourne Bulldogs let's take you uh, around the in, the infield here we'll give you the batting order when they come to bat uh, behind, uh, behind the plate for Melbourne will be one of the best catchers in Brevard County in Jake Witherspoon. We'll tell you about the pitcher coming up. Winslow will be over at first. Grisani at second. Bryson Ayala at uh, shortstop tonight. Bryson, I'll tell you what, the sophomore, every time I see Bryson, it appears he's grown two more inches and uh, he's having a great year. Chandler will be at third from left to right. It'll be Belez, Richardson, and Dillard. Jake Richardson a ball player through and through and on the bump tonight for the Melbourne Bulldogs. Will be. Is it Brevin? Yes, yeah, Brevin Smith. I'm sorry. Brevin Smith. I'm sorry. Brevin Smith on the bump tonight. Threw me for a loop there uh, on the hill tonight. Uh, Brevin this year uh, in his fourth appearance he's 2-0 and with a 0.66 ERA he's got a save this year Brevin in 10 and two-thirds innings pitched has given up eight hits two runs one earned walked four and struck out 12 as Malatino steps in the first pitch offering is no idea what he called looked like a ball I didn't see a hand go up so one and oh to Malatino. Jack usually swings that bat. Popped up, and you won't be able to see it, and neither will I, so I'll judge. And hauled in for out number one by the outfielder, Velez. So that's going to bring up Luke Campbell. Can't see left field. Obstructed view. Our apologies. It is what it is. Last night, Luke Campbell raised his batting average over 300 to 305 with a 5 for 5 and 6 RBI performance last night. Luke now has 12 RBIs on the season that ties him for second on the Vieira Hawks. And Brevin Smith starts off would look like a strike, but I didn't see an arm go up. And it's a ball, so 1 and 0 oh to Campbell. The pitch from Smith and that one Caleb dives and makes a spectacular catch to grab that. And uh, that'll even the count up at a ball and a strike. Caleb gets up, dusts himself off, and he's back on the camera. Good job, Caleb. Give that man a contract. The 1-1 pitch to Campbell coming. High and inside. High <laughs> two and one. Yeah, you'll feel that rumble on uh, over there off of Wickham Road in about three minutes. No, it's not a rocket. Two and one, Smith Rock kicks and delivers again high and extremely tight. That'll move the count to three balls and one strike. Want to welcome everyone watching here tonight. And Luke chased the high one, and that'll even it up. 
or not even it up, but full count at three and two. One out here in the top of the first inning. This is, the, to me, right now, these are the two best teams in Brevard County. Put them in a bag, shake them up. I've got Vieira one, Melbourne two. Many people have Melbourne one, Vieira two. Strike three, that's a butte from Brevin. And it's two outs with Alex Sosa coming to the dish. These two teams, they do. Uh, Vieira pitches very well. Three, four guys that can hit the gun, top the gun at 90 miles an hour. And when you're talking about Melbourne, man, they just slug the baseball all over the field. Batting 327 as a team. They've got 10 home runs this year. Out of any, out of all the teams that I've covered, what's wrong? All right. All right. Out of all the teams that I've covered this year, that's by far the most in the county to this point of the season. And speaking of home runs, Alex Sosa steps in, and he'll look at a pitch outside for ball one. Sosa, second leading hitter for Brock Doty's team this year. Alex comes in batting 455. He leads the team in RBIs with 16 and home runs with three. And he's now got a straight hitter's count at 2 and 0. Oh. She said, better than mine, I'm driving in Ohio. Well, welcome, Miss Gina Hunt. 3-0 and o to Alex. See if Brevin gives him anything at all to hit, and he will not. And that's a four-pitch walk to Alex Sosa. It's going to bring up the Hawks' leading hitter, Lucas Glendening. Glendening on the bump tonight, but he is their leading hitter in terms of batting average as well. 4-86 this year for Lucas. Four eighty six. He is stands about six five, six six, lean, gets those arms extended. Good hitter. He's a great athlete. And Sosa's got a runner for him. It's probably Kyler Dwiggins if I and it is. I could do the lineup for the team now. So, Brock, Coach Bob, and all this, I'll take over. <laughs> I love, uh, I'll tell you here in a second after this pitch. And there's a shot, and that's going to be fielded by Grassani up and over to first to Winslow for the third and final out. So, no runs, no hits, no errors, one left. We had to leave it here. We, lit, we head to the bottom of the first inning and Vieira nothing with Melbourne coming to bat. Talking about these two teams and just how close this series has been between these two. Uh, it's amazing. And the one thing that I, I find to be remarkable about what these two teams have done over the course of the last couple of years is the team that wins the district championship inevitably is beaten by the team that loses the district championship and it's always obviously in the regional quarter or regional semifinals because these two teams both make the playoffs every year. They each have separate opponents in round one. And then they both win and then meet up in the regions. And over the last four years, I think it's been now, the team that has won the district championship loses in the regional semifinals last year. It was Vieira that won the district tournament, which we did, and we'll be doing it. Actually, this year, I'm proud to announce Brevard County, um, uh, Brevard Sports Network, I should say, will be doing the 6A8 baseball and the 6A8 softball district championships. We've already got approval from Chad Raymond and uh, Miss Maggie Davis for that. Uh, the softball will be right here at Melbourne High School, and the baseball will be at U-Triple-S-A Stadium. But last year, uh, Melbourne won over to Harmony, I think is where we went last year, and won that district championship. Really put one on Melbourne, and it's a district championship game, and then Melbourne uh, returned the favor in the regional semis. And, of course, you know, that win in the regional semis would catapult uh, – Melbourne all the way to the Final Four last year. It would not surprise me that the winner of the regional semifinals this year does the same thing again, goes all the way to the Final Four. So, 
All right, let's give you that Melbourne Bulldog lineup. Leading off, playing center field, Jake Richardson batting second. Bryson Ayala batting third will be Jake Weatherspoon. Really like watching Jake play. Can you tell I'm a big fan of catchers? Uh, batting third is going to be Christian Dillard. Batting fourth is going to be Jackson Hall. William Chandler will uh, bat sixth. Brevin Smith seventh. Lawrence Winslow eighth. And Anthony Velez ninth. Luke Campbell, Jack Malatino, and Ryan Lewis from left to right in the outfield. Simpkins, Torres, Dominic Leone at second, and Fano Cruz behind the plate. Alex, or uh, over at first, Alex Sosa behind the plate. And on the bump tonight for the Vieira Hawks is the aforementioned Lucas Clendenning. And Lucas uh, struggling with the ERA a bit this season, but don't let the ERA fool you. He comes in. This is his uh, fifth appearance this year, his fourth start. He's got a 4.85 ERA. He's 2 and 0. Oh. Uh, Lucas so far in 13 innings pitch has allowed 12 hits, 10 runs, nine of them earned. He's walked nine and struck out 15. The key to Lucas is early. He's got to get his confidence going early. As Richardson steps in, Richardson the third leading hitter on this unbelievably great hitting Melbourne baseball team. Richardson comes in. This year, batting 405. He's got 15 hits and 37 at bat, seven RBIs. He's got one of the 10 bombs this team has hit. And Glenn Denning drops in another breaking ball. This for strike two, nothing and two from the 6 5 right hander. Glenn Denning peeks in to get the signal from Sosa. Richardson's got a battle now with Bryson Ayala on deck. Good waste pitch by Lucas. Fastball on the outside corner. Tried to make Jake Chase, but a very disciplined hitter. You don't bat what Jake bats by chasing pitches like that. Lucas's pitch outside, and the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Once again, we want to thank Anchor Plumbing, 321-848-1196. Check them out online. I love their website, brevardplumbers.com. Two balls, two strikes. The 2-2 two -two popped up and certainly playable as Fano Cruz tracks it, tracks it, tracks it, hauls it, one out. And that's going to bring up Bryson Aiello. Now let me say, let me preface my next comment by saying this as Bryson walks to the plate. I'm not saying his skills are akin to Alex Rodriguez. What I'm about to say is he has that look, the frame, the way he carries himself as a baseball player, that is. The way he carries himself, the way he swings. The, I just love watching Bryson Ayala develop. He's just a sophomore, and that time ducks under a curveball that stays inside, and he's having quite a year, I might add. So far this season, Ayala leads the Bulldogs with a 486 batting average. He's got one home run, one triple, four doubles, 10 RBIs, 18 hits, and 16 runs scored. He's a player. And this one coming over here, and that actually, uh, Caleb, I tell you, he needs a gold glove. You should have seen the way he backhanded that one. And it's one and two. Ayala outside, and it's even up at two balls and two straight strikes. Jake Weatherspoon on deck, Indian River College commit. High, and the count is full at three and two. That's a good-looking picture on that phone there, Caleb. Nice job, buddy. Caleb did the unthinkable last night. Talk about that coming up. Three balls, two strikes. Strike three, butte at the knees. And Ayala goes down swinging, and that'll bring up Jake Weatherspoon. Last night, a foul ball 
we were able to put our camera behind the fence last night. And, and lo and behold, you know, one in a 100 shot, bang, foul ball hits the camera, knocks it off the screen. Before the next pitch, Caleb had the camera back up in its place, headphones plugged. He didn't miss the at bat. Really, really quite a remarkable thing last night. Witherspoon fouls that one off. Caleb's looking up. Oh, and one to Jake, who's headed to Indian River State College. Jake, an outstanding catcher. Two, one in the batter's box, one behind the plate. Two of the best in the county. Of course, you also have to throw Riley Jackson from O'Galley in there. Curveball hits the outside corner for strike two. Weatherspoon, a 417 batter. He's also got one of the 10 bombs, three doubles, seven RBIs, 15 hits, and 36 official at bats. Strike three on the fastball, and that puts the Bulldogs down in order. One, two, three. We go to the top of the second with Fano Cruz, Adriel Torres, and Ryan Lewis do up. Like to welcome in uh, Christy McCullough, Debbie Malatino, Karen Watson, Diane Heredia, Andy Deaton, Chad Doty, Sean Polino, Ray Sims, Caden Sickler, and everyone else watching here tonight on the Brevard Sports Network. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, you don't have to follow us because we go live a lot, and I know that's a pain to get notifications constantly, but if you would, Hit the like button on Brevard Sports Network Facebook page. We would greatly appreciate your support in that manner. And, of course, on social media as well. We can be found on Instagram and Twitter at Sports Brevard. All right, we head to on YouTube, on YouTube as well. Yep, yeah, yeah. Eventually, one of these years, we're going to actually start broadcasting these on YouTube. We do upload all of these games to the platform. Once they've concluded. All right, stepping in now is another impressive young player in Fano Cruz, first baseman. Cruz, a senior, 235 this year. Not swinging the stick like he wants to yet. But uh, he will. He's got two triples, two doubles, seven RBIs, and 12 hits. Cruz bats from the left side. He looks at strike one. Now he looks at ball one. One and one to the senior. High and tight. Two and one. Did not see, we got here late, of course. We are never on time with anything. Uh, so I didn't get a chance to get the umpires. That's a strike. Two and two. That's why we could never actually work for a network. <laughs> you actually have to go on when you say. That's strike three called, and Cruz goes down. On strikes, strikeout number two for Brevin Smith. And this will bring up one of the best fielders in all of Brevard County in Adriel Torres. Torres, 
a 263 hitter. He's got a triple, two doubles, six RBIs, 10 hits, and 38 official at bats this year for Brock Doty. And he'll look at ball one high. Brock will make his triumphant return. Thank goodness uh, I know Brock is itching to get back, and uh, he will do so on April the 10th at home against University. And we can't wait for Coach to come back. And I knew there was a reason we parked across the street. As that one is fouled off into the parking lot for strike one. But I uh, can't wait for Brock to get back. And we're going to sit down with Brock on the 9th and uh, have a live interview with him. Excited for that. I did an interview with Brock last summer. But by the time I got around to putting it up, we everything was outdated in the interview. And that's a shot into center field. And that is the first base hit. Between either team tonight, and Adriel Torres, who had two hits last night, continues to swing a hot bat as he's got a one-out single, and that'll bring up Ryan Lewis. Ryan, a 280 hitter this year. Five RBIs. Keep your eye on Adriel. He's got seven stolen bases. Been caught. Oh, I'm sorry, six stolen bases in seven attempts. So he's been caught once. Brevin rocks, kicks, and fires. And that's a butte right down Sarno Road for strike one. I like the pace with which Brevin works whether from the set or from the stretch, or wind up, I should say. Torres is off, Richardson's throw in with his seventh stolen base of the year is Adriel Torres, and we just told you, keep your eye on him. Nice throw. But a slide gets under the tag. And now a runner in scoring position for Ryan. On deck hitter is Cam Simpkins. Smith kicks, fires. Yes, indeed. Strike two. I've been waiting for this one all day. Oh, I tell you what, I'd have swung at it. Two and two. Good plate discipline by Ryan Lewis. Smith kicks and fires. Strike three. Big strikeout from Brevin as he gives a stare in. And that'll bring up Cam Simpkins. Simpkins, a 438 hitter this year. Now he's got 16 official at bats and seven hits, but that's a good spot for a junior right now, batting eighth, batting four, over 400. Two outs, Torres at second. Can Brevin Smith get out without giving up a run here? The curveball is outside. I want to say, uh, Happy New Year to everybody, too. Caleb, happy New Year. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? It's all right. Baseball starts tomorrow. Major League Baseball. I I have never been more excited for a Major League Baseball season in my entire life than the one I am that's going to start tomorrow. Popped up, and Witherspoon does not have a play on it, but that's a big strike. You know, with the pitch clock and the bases and – the no-shift rule, it's going to make for a great season. Whether you're a fan of it or you're not a fan of the rule changes, I promise you it's going to be a great baseball season. Certainly, if you have to work early in the morning and you like watching baseball on TV, because no longer you have to watch these four-hour snooze fests. One ball and one strike with two outs here. Rocks, kicks, and fires. That's strike two. And Simpkins can't look at that.
Brevin with three strikeouts already popped up and out of play. The thing that I like that Major League Baseball did with these rules, Caleb, is the fact that they did them all at one time. They didn't say, let's make the base bigger this year, the pitch clock next year, and take away the shift in three years. You know what? Get it worked out, get it figured out, and knock it out at one time. The one-two from Smith to Simpkins. The curveball is lined in the left, and Torres will round third, and he will score the first run of the game. And the Vieira Hawks, on a one-two curveball, take a one-nothing lead. Nice piece of hitting by Cameron Simpkins. He waited on it and lined it into left field. And the stolen base by Torres proves to be huge as he scores the first run of the night. Vieira's been a two-out team this year. Good, 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 uh, good job, Caleb. Good job. And uh, Megan Simpkins just logged in. And Megan, I hope you got an opportunity to see Cam Simpkins produce the game's first RBI of the night. Cam with a lead at first. Brevin rocks, kicks, and fires high for a ball. One ball, one strike, two outs here. That was a good pitch. Simpkins just got it. Fouled back and out of play. And Brevin, who has worked ahead all night, is ahead again. One ball and two strikes. Yeah, the, yeah, the wind's blowing right in tonight, that's for sure. But down here... It'll swirl and change on a moment's notice, too. Right now, blowing in. Brevin with the one, two to Dominic Leone. Leone, a sophomore, out at second base tonight. I'll tell you what, Dominic has really been swinging a hot stick lately. He had a chance to talk to his dad last night. We were. You know, talking about Max Leone and uh, Max in the eighth grade, he'll be on this field playing for the for uh, the Hawks in a year or two. Curveball is high and inside. Dominic, of course, and I mentioned it every broadcast, but we get new viewers. But Dominic, part of that team that went to Warner Robins, Georgia, played on ESPN for the Vieira Hawks uh, Youth League. What a, what a time that was! I believe we covered that tournament down in South Florida. The 3-2 two, the two, high ball four as Simpkins was going on the pitch. And Leone, who was staring at one and two, battles back to force a walk. And that's huge because you get back to the top of the lineup with Jack Malatino. Malatino flied out to the left fielder his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Jack comes in this year, came into this game, I should say, batting 347. He's got a couple of doubles and double-digit RBIs with 11. So a little two-out torture from the Hawks to the Bulldogs here, I call it. And let's see if Brevin can work out of it. And Jack Malatino, who loves that first pitch, is no stranger to it there as he fouls it straight back and over to the softball field for strike one. Brevin rocks, kicks, and fires. Curveball is... Oh, they got him. Oh, they did not. Oh, my. What a shot from Witherspoon down to Ayala. He looked like he was dead in the water there. And I guess he got around the tag. The umpire had the, the best angle. The throw definitely beat him back to the bag. Smith, 0-2. Malatino takes one. I'd like to welcome in Billy Martin. Watching from Texas tonight, his grandson, Luke Campbell. Last night, our WNJ construction player of the game, five for five with six RBIs. Billy Martin, also my favorite all-time manager. 
The pitch inside, ball two, two balls, two strikes, and two outs. So we've got our first Deuces Wild situation of the night. There are four twos on the board. This is the top of the second. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. The turn card pitch coming. Curveball is fouled off, and we'll do it all again. Good crowd on hand here tonight at Dawson Field. It's weird not seeing Coach Donovan, though. First year skipper, Jose Soto. Smith, the 2-2. Two -two. That one is shot in the right, but right at Dillard. And he hauls it in for the third and final out. But an Adriel Torres single, followed by a stolen base and a Cameron Simpkins single, produces the first run of the game. The Hawks send six batters to the plate. They score one run on two hits and strand two. We head to the bottom of the second. Due up for the Melbourne Bulldogs will be Dillard Hall and Chandler. All right, welcome back here to Brevard Sports Network. I want to give a shout-out to the coaching staff of the Melbourne Bulldogs. Of course, Joe Soto, the head coach. So we're hopping. Works with the catchers. Dave Barricott, pitching coach. Mike Corte, the infield. Ricardo Ayala and Scott Grish also on the staff. Uh, your base coaches. Uh, Ricardo Ayala is at first. And over at third base is Mike Corte. As Glenn Denning takes his final warm-up toss. Coming up tomorrow on Brevard Sports Network, Cape Coast Conference Championship Tennis. Girls tennis tomorrow. Yeah, it's a new one for us, but we're going to do it. <laughs> Give it a shot anyway. Never stopped us before. We don't know anything about cross country, but there you'll see us at Wickham Park standing in a puddle four feet deep as Glenn <laughs> swimming with a life vest as Dillard steps in. <laughs> That's strike one from Lucas Glenn Denning. The right fielder for the Bulldogs comes in batting 481 this year. He's got a home run, two doubles, eight RBIs, 13 hits, and 27 official at-bats. And, Lucas Clendenning pulls the string on that one and jumps ahead of Dillard. Nothing in two. Alex Sosa liked it. Home plate umpire, not so much. One ball and two strikes. Oh, that one is perfectly weighted on there by Dillard. The off-speed pitch is yoked in the left field for a lead-off single. And the Bulldogs, with nobody out here in the bottom of the second, have a little something going. I tell you what, same situation. Brevin Smith threw a curveball to Simpkins. He weighted on it, lined it. Same deal there. Glenn Denning was ahead through the curve ball. Dillard was sitting on it, and he lined it in the left field for a base hit. And this is going to bring up Jackson Hall. And Hall's a 238. It wouldn't be surprised at all to see a bunt here. 
apparently not. I did notice looking at the stats today and writing the preview, I didn't see a lot of sacrifices or bunts from the Bulldogs this year. But look, when you're batting what they're batting and you can hit the ball the way they can hit the ball, maybe you don't lay them down. It's a power hitting team. Now they are missing their biggest power hitter who will return tomorrow night, Michael Petit. He'll be back tomorrow night. Two and O oh now to Jackson Hall. Off and running. Sosa takes a shot to throw, and that's a stolen base for Dillard. And the jump he got on that was absolutely tremendous. That stole that base on Glenn Dinning. And Alex Sosa will now go out to have a chit chat with Lucas. And I think Alex is just reminding him not to forget, not to forget about the base runner and not that a senior would, but he didn't take a peek over and that's a good grab there by Dillard. For Dillard, that's his fifth stolen base of the year. And he does square the bunt, and now the bunt is on, and that's two balls and a strike. So now we see a little small ball come into play here, and I like the call. You know, you go back and you look at the scores between these two teams, and we're going to do that right now because a run makes a difference. Four to two back on March 7th, 5-1-7-1, one nothing, 5-4-2-1. So a run matters. Cruz comes darting in. That ball is bunted foul. But I will say this, you know, and I, I gotta give I gotta give a big shout out to Bobby Collins here because you know we did a game earlier this year in which the, the O'Galley Commodores could not for their life lay a bunt down. And, and and for all intent and purpose, it ended up really costing them an opportunity to stay in the game and win it. The next day I drove by and I had to stop because every Guy on the roster fouled out of play, and the count moves or stays at two and two. Every guy on the roster was in the cage bunting. So it's, it is a lost art. And it, to me, as Orville Susong once pointed out to me, and then I started really following the bunt, it is one of the most exciting plays in baseball because everybody has a job to do from the left fielder to the right fielder and everybody in the infield. The curveball throws. That's in left. Throws it away. And scoring will be Dillard as he took third base. And the throw from Sosa got into left field. And that's going to be an error, a throwing error. And that will score the first Bulldog run. No need to bunt now. The bases are empty for Jackson Hall. And it's one. One, you get that? Rarely do you see that. And the Bulldogs have tied it up with some small ball. A couple of two stolen bases there by Dillard. That's his sixth stolen base of the year. And that is ball four. And it's as if Dillard was never on because there is nobody out and Jackson Hall is up. So they continue to put base runners on here as William Chandler steps in. Chandler, a 312 hitter. He's got seven RBIs. Now, here's what you got to keep your eye on whether Glenn Denning takes a shot over or tries to hold it. you got to throw over there because obviously Melbourne is going to take the base if you don't pay attention to the runners. Strike one from Lucas. I wouldn't be surprised to see Sosa take a shot down there either. Curveball is outside and it's one and one. 
One ball, one strike, nobody out. One run in already. Manufactured run by Dillard. Stole two bases and came home on the throwing air down the third. A lot of scouts here tonight. I see them. They can, they can hide all they want, but I got my eyes on them. Glenn Denning. Nice backhanded stop by Alex, and it's two and one. Two balls and one strike, and there you go. Lucas takes a shot over. Sometimes you don't even have to try to pick them off. You just got to keep them close. Looks over, and he goes. And he takes another shot. Yeah, you just, you just got to let him know. You got to let him know you know he's there. And he's off and running anyway. The curveball, I tell you what, that, he ran on the perfect pitch. I, I mean, the third stolen base of the inning, and Jackson Hall is now at second. And the Hawks are trying to figure it out here because Lucas Clendenning went over twice. And then on the one pitch he doesn't, he runs on the perfect pitch. I mean, he ran on the curveball. You're going to steal a base, that's the pitch to steal it on. Well, look, Lucas is 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. I'll finish my thought on that in a second. Outside for a ball, and it's three and two. At, he's, he's tall, and he's got a high leg kick. So, you're, you know, I'm sure they got a stopwatch on him for his delivery. It's a lot of body to get up and get down. Three balls and two strikes. The pitch, the curve balls outside, four ball, four. And Melbourne has forced their second walk of the inning and now have runners at first and second with Brevin Smith coming up. Brevin could really help his cause here as Bob Doty's gonna come out and have a conversation with Lucas and his infield here about how they wanna handle this. Keep in mind, there's still nobody out. Brevin could drop a bunt down and cause a lot of havoc. This is, the grass is short, but it's not turf. So the ball's not, you know, it's not, not a lot of speed, so you're, you know, you're going to force them to make a play here. This is definitely an interesting scenario as the home plate umpire comes out and says, all right, guys, time to break it up. Now, under the new rules, once the home plate umpire would issue that once. Yes, indeed, this is what our player of the game gets tonight. Under the new rules, once the home plate umpire in Major League Baseball issues that warning, they, I, they have a certain amount of time to come off of that mound or it's a ball. Nobody out. Bottom of the second, two on for Brevin Smith. Brevin, a 226 hitter. He's got two home runs, though, so Brevin's got power. And I tell you what, so far tonight, Melbourne has guessed right on Lucas's curveball a lot outside. Sosa takes a shot and nearly got him, but back in time is Jackson Hall. Glenn Denning comes to a set. 
Fenno Cruz way in, and Brevin Smith swings over the top. Four strike one, one ball and one strike. Brevin would love to, at the very least here, advance these runners. The on-deck hitter is Lawrence Winslow. Glenn Denning rocks, kicks, and fires, and there's a ground ball. And that one gets past Torres and around third and on his way to score. The second run of the inning is Jackson Hall. And the Melbourne Bulldogs take a two to one lead. That's how you help your own calls. That one just took a hop over the glove of Adriel Torres and in the left field. And still nobody out with runners at first and second as Melbourne will give a courtesy runner to their pitcher. And that courtesy runner is... Vitaba. Wade Vitaba. And stepping up is Lawrence Winslow, and he squares the bunt with nobody out. Why not? Winslow, a 154 hitter, so a sacrifice here, certainly first and foremost, as Vitava with a huge lead at first. Obviously, he's not being held, swung on, and miss. you're going to have to get that. Yep. This wind is terrible. All right. So, nothing and one to win. I think right here, you know you got a 154 hitter. You're throwing three fastballs and let him try to hit them. Chilly now, huh? As Cameron Simpkins gives a sign over here. Two in and still nobody out with two on, and he is squared to bunt, pulls it back. And Fano Cruz was all the way down knocking at his front door on that one. Two balls and one strike to Lawrence Winslow, who sports the number 42. And that one is popped up into center field. Malatino's got it, and the runner will hold up at second. That is the first out of the inning. And this is going to bring up Anthony Velez. Velez is a 250 hitter. He's got a couple of RBIs this year. He has hit a double. This is just his 11th plate appearance this season. Velez out in left field tonight. So one out here in the bottom of the second. Two hits in the inning and two walks have produced two runs. There's three stolen bases that have been the big key here. Pitch, strike one. I want to welcome in Betty Ann Wells. Watching from Naples, Dominic's grandparents on the stream tonight, Shane Martin, my buddy as well, Tim McKinney, Cheryl Martin, Andy Deaton, and Jordan Hoffman. Swung on and missed for strike two. Mr. RMO Strander. All watching here on Brevard. This is the primetime game in the county tonight. No about to doubt it. The 0-2. And Glenn Denning just off the outside corner. One and two. Tomorrow is opening day in Major League Baseball. Glenn Denning's one, two outside, and it's two and two. Jake Richardson is on deck. That's the top of the bull, uh, Bulldog lineup. Oh. 
high, ball three. And certainly to load the bases, and there is activity in the Vieira bullpen. Dylan Jordan heads that way as well. Also up and throwing is Cam Wicker. And I'll tell you what, that's a great job by Velez to get a piece there because right now Glenn Denning's struggling throwing strikes. And so if you could force him to have to throw another pitch as the number nine hitter, more power to you. The three, two, and that's ball four. And I, and I, I don't know where that one was, but all I know is it was a ball. The third walk of the inning has loaded the bases for Jake Richardson. And Bob Doty cannot make another trip here or he's got to pull him. Richardson popped out to Fenno Cruz his last time out. So the Hawks are trying to figure this out for themselves with one out in the bottom of the second. Two in, bases juiced with Bulldogs. Velez at first. Watava at second. Chandler at third. Jake Richardson at the plate. And Bob Doty's coming out. Now, I thought you had to pull him. And I believe he is. That's going to do it for Lucas Glenn Denning. So they chase the ace in the bottom of the second as Cam Wicker comes in. We will give you Cam's numbers. We'll be right back here on the Brevard Sports Network. Hello, Space Coast, Alan slaughter -Zinski for the Brevard Sports Network. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your support of BSN and allowing us to cover your student athletes and come into your home each and every night. Give us a follow on Facebook at Brevard Sports Network, and here's the many more years of top-notch sports coverage right here in Brevard County. Thanks again. I'm Marcus May, and you're watching Bavar Sports Network. My man. Want to welcome, or want to thank, I should say, Marcus May. Uh, and don't forget, coming up May 6th at the Duran Golf Club is the Marcus May Golf Outing to benefit the Marcus May Foundation. And I had an opportunity to sit and chit-chat with uh, Marcus a couple days ago over at Durand. You'll see that interview coming up early next week. So, uh, Lucas Glendening chased here in the bottom of the second inning with one out. And coming in is Cam Wicker. Uh, Wicker with quite a season on the bump so far this year. Uh, Wicker is 3-1. and one. This is his fifth appearance. Uh, he's got a 1.91 ERA. Wicker, 14 and two-thirds innings pitched. He's given up 17 hits, eight runs, four of them earned, seven walks, and 24 strikeouts as he takes his final warm-up tosses. So, once again, let's set the table for you. Bases loaded for the Bulldogs with Jake Richardson coming up. Richardson popped out to Fano Cruz his last time up. And it would only be fitting the, the way these two teams have alternated wins and losses over the last 10 with the way this one is going. But long way from the finish line as Richardson steps in. Wicker, another tall pitcher. The staff has four that can... Tip the guns at 90. Wicker is one of them. Go, 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 
as Brevin Smith stays loose behind us in the Melbourne Bulldog. Wicker rocks, kicks, and fires outside. Ball one. I think I saw Double D said he was out in the cheap seat somewhere. I don't know where they're at. Pitch. Nice punt. And it's a squeeze punt with the bases loaded. And the ball gets away. Two run score. And here comes Velez. Slides. All three Melbourne runners cross the plate on a suicide squeeze with the bases loaded. And it's 5-1 to one Melbourne. How about that? Unbelievable. Never would expect to see a bunt from Jake Richardson, but he lays down a butte, Clark, and all three runners end up scoring. And the key to that was uh, Vitava, who never stopped, never stopped running. As soon as the ball was picked up and thrown to first, Vitava was 10 steps down the third baseline. He never stopped at third base. Great, great play. I don't know how many different times you want to run it, but a great play. Who had that one on the bingo card? I didn't. And Richardson will go out 1-3 on that play. And it's 5-1. to one. All five runs have come in this inning. And the throw, the throwing error allowed Velez to score, and he never stopped either. I mean, they were trucking around the bases. That was just decision that he wasn't going to stop no matter what. Yep, and this brings up Bryson Ayala, who struck out his last time up, and he looks at strike one. Fouled back to the screen, and Wicker is ahead. 0-2. Oh, Strike three called, and that ends the inning. However, the Melbourne Bulldogs score five runs on two hits, three walks, and two errors. They leave none. We head to the top of the third. Melbourne 5, Vieira 1. Outstanding chess match that second inning, bottom of the second inning, which concludes with a suicide squeeze with the bases loaded. Uh, and Jake Richardson, I mean, he, you couldn't lay down a better bunt. But what, for lack of a better term, I, I, you know, well, I know what I would say if I wasn't on air, what kind of call it was, right? But what a gutsy, gutsy, gutsy call, man. Gutsy call. <laughs> Saiva, I've only ever seen that one other time. Danny Widener did it. As we head to the top of the third, Luke Campbell, Alex Sosa, and Lucas Glenn Denning.
Luke Campbell steps in. A lot of baseball, as Cheryl Abdella says, left to play here. Four-run deficit. This is the first time this year. Well, let me, let me give you this stat after Brevin Smith throws the Luke. Outside and low, ball one. Vera Hawks this year have given up four runs in a game just three times in 15 games, and they've won all three of those games. So, there's Luke Campbell down the left field line. That's a fair ball, and Campbell stays hot as he rounds first. Struck out the last time up, but this time leads off with a single. And Vieira's got the leadoff hitter aboard with catcher Alex Sosa coming up. Brevin Smith. Luke with a decent lead at first. Sosa, a left-handed swinger. Might be knocking that one out somewhere around double D out there. And there's a ground ball down the right field line foul. Alex headed to North Carolina State next year. An opportunity to meet his grandfather last night prior to the Heritage game and found out another true blue Baltimorean native that Baltimore native that bleeds black and orange like I do. Five to one here, Melbourne on top. The pitch high and outside. Not sure if that was a pitch out or what that was. One and one. Coach Soto telling everybody, get over. He's a left-handed hitter. Why are you so close to the line here over on the left side? He's not going to put the ball down this way. He didn't say all that, but that's what he was implying by telling them to move. <laughs> right. I don't think I've ever seen that. Alex Sosa squares the bunt. And it's nothing and two, so Alex is going to have to battle now. Alex got an RBI last night, but they just wouldn't give him anything to hit. The Heritage pitching staff. So nothing and two to the Wolfpack commit. I told you who Bryson Ayala reminded me of. Alex reminds me of Adley Rushman, the young rookie catcher for the Orioles. He does. He really does. Three and one, or I'm sorry, one and two, third inning. And this time, this is, oh, this is an easy double play. Ayala steps on the bag. How about the stretch over there? At first base, that is a 6-3 unassisted double play. Ayala steps on the bag to get Campbell. And then goes the first. And in the blink of an eye, there are two outs. Nice play. The stretch. I, I mean, you know, how about the stretch? That's all I could say by Lawrence Winslow over there. Looked like a hockey goalie making a save. Curveball drops in for strike one on Lucas Clendenning. Clendenning grounded out his last time up. Smith rocks, kicks, and fires. And the one thing you definitely wanted to make sure you do is you, you score five runs. If you're Brevin Smith, you want to get your – the perfect scenario is one, two, three. And it didn't start that way. But he does. He throws a double play ball at Bryson. And we just talked about Joe Soto moving his infield over, shaded towards the bag. And because of that, Ayala was right there. Yeah, Shane, I agree. I, I, I. He's got, I said earlier, Bryson's got the frame of a young Alex Rodriguez. And that's ball four. And how big is that double play now as Fano Cruz steps in? I'm not saying he's got 
I mean, he's only a sophomore, and he's leading the Bulldogs in hitting this year. But what I'm saying is he's got that frame, and you're right, the sky is the limit for him. So one on here with two outs, and Cruz at the plate. Coach Bob Doty would love to see Fano's back get going now. Swings at the high fastball. Strike one. Still got to grow into his legs and his feet a little bit, Ayala, but 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 he will. Pitch swung on and missed on the off speed. And it's 0 and 2. As Smith is one strike away from sitting the Hawks down here in the top of the third with a 5-1 lead. Outside, ball one. Curveball inside, and that'll even it up at two and two. So two balls, two strikes, and two outs here. That's obviously a deuces wild situation. What will the turn card pitch be here from Brevin Smith? We'll enjoy it together. And that one is popped up into right field and hauled in by Dillard. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. We head to the bottom of the third. Bulldogs, five, Hawks one. All right, welcome back here to Dawson Field with the Bulldogs. Have a 5-1 lead, and uh, we'll see coming up for they sent eight batters to the dish last inning, when which they scored five runs. We'll see Jake Weatherspoon, Dillard, and Jackson Hall coming up to face Cam Wicker. These two teams, you never get the feeling that even last year, like when Vieira was way up on top in that that uh, district championship game, you never got the feeling that the game is over. And these, I got news for you. These guys are making me hungry for Sour Patch Kids. They got a huge bag in the dugout, and I keep my eye keeps drifting to it. <laughs> Do you see it? Yeah, we we'll have to stop and grab one on the way. Back to the studio, and the first pitch offering to Jake Weatherspoon is a ball. Weatherspoon, 2-0. Uh, oh. Say hello to Diana Heredia, Taylor Mill, Kentucky. Grandma loves number 21, Mel High School. Welcome. And thank you for watching from Taylor Mill, Kentucky. The 2-1, Witherspoon with a ground ball to Torres, scoops it, throws it, one out. Adriel Torres with a good throw. And that'll bring up Dillard. Last time up, he singled. And got it all started. And if you remember the last time up, what Dillard did was he hit a one-two curveball 
He was patiently waiting on it. Christian went patiently waiting on it. And he lined it in the left field, and he looks at a fastball from Wicker for strike one. Oh, he didn't call a strike on that? I thought he raised his arm. That's why. That's why I say it. I'm, I'm not sure where the pitch was. And there's another shot this time over to second, and Dominic Leone is up and over to first. So two batters and two outs. The first four batters in the bottom of the second inning all scored for Melbourne. They didn't get their first, uh, Vieira didn't register the first out until the fifth batter of the inning, which was Lawrence Winslow flying out to the center fielder. So Jackson Hall steps in. He walked and scored his last time up. Wicker fouled back to the wall. Nothing and one. Who's your team this year in Major League Baseball? Tell me who you think's going to win the World Series. The Astros going to do it again. They lost some pitching this year. How about those Braves? Cheryl Advelis' Braves this year. Swing and a miss on the 91-mile-an-hour fastball. 0-2. Strike three. Sounded like a tennis player delivering that one with the extra oomph on it. And three up, three down. To the top of the fourth, 5-1 Bulldogs. All right, welcome back to Dawson Field here. We're Brevin Smith back on the bump for the top of inning number four. It's 5-1, to one. Melbourne Bulldogs on top. It's going to be Adriel Torres, Ryan Lewis, and Cam Simpkins do up for Vieira this inning. Cheryl's Braves, she says they'll be somewhere. I think they'll be right there this year. I like the Braves this year. I like uh, the Astros, of course. The Yankees, you know, the Yankees to me are one of those teams this year where it wouldn't shock me if they won the World Series, and it wouldn't shock me if they missed the playoffs. No, the Yankees. Yeah, that's what we just said. We were just talking about them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we were. We just did. We were just talking about them. And the good news is I got video proof. <laughs> All right, as Adriel Torres steps in, Adriel has scored the lone Vieira run. He uh, singled and stole a base and then scored on the hit by Cam Simpkins back in the second inning. He'll look at strike one on the outside corner. I think the Jays could be a surprise team this year, the Toronto Blue Jays. And there's a ground ball, Ayala up, and the Rocket over to first for out number one. And this will bring up Ryan Lewis if you're scoring at home. That's a 6-3 put out. Yes, I'm going to watch a lot of baseball this year. I don't think I've talked about baseball as much when we previewed it on Mouth and All Sports Talk the other night, we're going to preview the National League this Sunday night. But oh, I'm excited. One out here as Ryan Lewis steps in. He struck out his last time up. Smith rocks and fires. And this one is 
hit deep into left field, way back, and foul. I tell you, if anybody hits it over the left field wall, I think they're going to be robbed of a home run call. <laughs> I can't see. Curve ball. This time is lined, and that ball heads to the gap. Cut off nicely, though, by Velez. And that'll hold Lewis at first with a long single. As Cam Simpkin steps up, he's one for one with an RBI tonight. The Cardinals are always in the mix, aren't they? I mean, do you even have to really ever mention the Cardinals, you know? Because you just know St. Louis is going to be there. They have to be there every year, the Cardinals do. They could be 10 games under 500 in June and somehow win the division. Inside. But I, I you know, I, I, I like the Cardinals this year. I think it's between them and the Brewers, obviously. I think Wilson Contreras. And that ball has popped straight up. Finish my thought. Richardson against the screen. We've seen him make plenty of acrobatic. Uh, Weatherspoon against the screen. We've seen him make plenty of catches against that screen. And that one right there, he knows that area behind the plate obviously better than anybody. And Weatherspoon hauls it in. But, you know, Contreras, Cubs all uh, was a Cubs all-star. But I think he's a big big key to that Cardinals team this year and that one is lined in the left field for a base hit so a two out base hit will advance Ryan Lewis Dominic Leone with a good piece of hitting and I think you got to ask yourself about your Cardinals Shane uh the, is the rotation healthy Mats, I think, was just a 50-inning guy last year because of shoulder issues. I think he had knee issues, too. Miles McCullis broke through for a good, strong, healthy season, but Tommy John surgery and a couple of injuries took him off the map. So there's my St. Louis Cardinal preview. For the Brewers, I think the big key for the Brewers this year is Tyrone Taylor's out for at least the first month of the season. So Garrett Mitchell's going to start in center field for Milwaukee. Revin Smith high for a ball to Jack Malatino. So back to the top of the order. Inside, I think the Mets, obviously the big question is there is how do you replace Edwin Diaz? But I'm in the minority thinking that closers aren't as hard to replace as a lot of other players on the field. I, I, just, I just feel that way. I think the Mets will find a closer that can get them through 2-0 and oh, to Malatino inside 3-0. and oh. It'll be Atlanta. That's going to be a good division. The Phillies, Atlanta, the Mets all year. Smith 3-0, 3-1. And, of course, out west, everybody picks the Padres every year, but they choke. So until I see it from... San Diego, I'll continue to pick the, the Giants or the uh, Dodgers. Smith, three and one. High ball four. So 
situation here with the hot hitting Luke Campbell coming up. And in this very situation last night, we saw Luke Campbell hit a bases clearing triple as Malatino takes a walk. And as Caleb alluded to before, the Hawks are no strangers to putting runs on the board with two outs as Joe Soto goes out to have a conversation. So this is Luke Campbell, who last night went five for five with six RBIs and singled his last time up. Going up against Brevin Smith here. Hawks trail this one. Five to one. But a golden opportunity here. Oh, and one. Smith to Campbell. Oh, and two. The curveball. And now Campbell's got a battle. And Smith can't play around. Everywhere you look is a hawk with Alex Sosa on deck. Smith to the set. He rocks, kicks, and fires. Strike three! And that will end the inning. As the Hawks leave the bases loaded, we head to the bottom of inning number four, 5-1 Melbourne. All right, the Hawks with a golden opportunity there, but Brevin Smith slams the door with his fourth strikeout of the night on the hot hitting Luke Campbell, and we head to the bottom of the fourth inning as Melbourne leads this one four to one. Chandler, Brevin Smith, and Lawrence Winslow do up. Chandler walked and scored in uh, his last at bat as Cam Wicker. Came on and settled things down for Vieira last inning as he got the heart of the Bulldog lineup. Two ground outs and a strikeout. Chandler, the third baseman, steps in. And that'll be ball one.
I'd like to welcome in my man Jeff Panucci, the reigning Brevard Sports Network Assistant Coast Coordinator of the Year. I think we got him his plaque, didn't we? Okay. Oh, and two now to Chandler. Yep. Swung on and missed and held on to by Alex Sosa, and that's out number one is Brevin Smith. I thought that was strike three. It is not strike two. Full foul. Two. Oh, he didn't hang on. He didn't hang on outside. So now the dynamic changes. Sosa did not hang on. Okay. My bad. So it's now one and two. That one fouled off as Chandler's a little late on it. Oh, you're welcome, but I just couldn't remember. <laughs> I'm getting old, Jeff. The one-two from Wicker. Strike three, and Sosa going to have to take the shot down to third to complete the strikeout, and he does. So the strikeout does happen, and that's one out. Yeah, we still got John Holmes' plaque. Coming up Sunday night on the Brevard Sports Network. We're going to name our boys and girls soccer players of the year. And it's just two players. And our boys and girls basketball players of the year. And, of course, uh, we'll name our coaches of the year in those respective sports as well. It's coming up Sunday night on Brevard Sports Network. Wicker to Smith. Saturday, we've got a real special baseball game here. We're, uh, we're going to kick off our fest. The game is at 4. We kick off our festivities at 3. Ken Goldfarb. Finish the thought here after the 0-1 to Brevin popped out of play. Ken Goldfarb bringing back the 1999 and 2000 Maryland Island Mustangs state championship teams. Those teams hit, you would talk about home runs. I think they hit like 80 in two years. But anyway, um, bringing those teams back for a reunion. Strike three, and that's two outs. And that game is at 4 o'clock, but at 3 o'clock at Merritt Island, that 99 and 00 team will be honored, and we're going to broadcast the game at 4 o'clock. And then the following Saturday, we've got the uh, Holy Trinity baseball game uh, that benefits the St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And Coach Kelsey always does a terrific job there. Last year, I got an opportunity to broadcast a couple of innings with Tim Wakefield and who knows who Coach Kelsey will have there this year. And swung on and missed by Lawrence Winslow, one and one. You never know. You might see a Travis or a Jason there. It'd be nice neat to have those guys on the broadcast. But, but Coach Kelsey promised me if they're there, they're coming on. Two and one, and that is grounded foul. And the count is even up at two balls and two strikes here. So two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Sing along with me at home if you know the words. Deuces are wild. Three twos on the board. Turn card pitch is ball three, so the count is full. Yeah, I love Coach Kelsey. The 3-2 to Lawrence, and he just stays alive, does his best Saturday night fever impression there. Fouls that off at the last minute. So three balls, two strikes, and two outs now. Melbourne on top, five to one here in the bottom of the fourth inning. This thing moving along quite nicely. Thank you very much. That means it's going to come to a complete stop now. Wicker's 3-2 is fouled out of play, and Lawrence Winslow continues to battle. Ah, 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 ah. Staying alive. Please don't. Three and two. Strike three. Gets him that time. 
So Wicker strikes out the side. That's four in a row for Cam. We head to the top of the fifth. 5-1 Melbourne. All right, welcome back. I want to thank WNJ Construction as well as Anchor Plumbing and the ball, and the Vera Hawks RBI Club. The Vera Hawks RBI Club has signed a 15-game deal with Brevard Sports Network. I believe we're eight games into that. But really what that deal also allows is for us to get around and see uh, what will be 15, well, 14, because we're going to see the Bulldogs twice. 14 different Brevard County teams, which I think is is awesome. And, yes, you'll see the, the Hawks 15 times if you're not a Vieira fan, but it's a good baseball team and good baseball. So. <laughs> so. Of course, we do other games as well. We got a great lacrosse game coming up Saturday. We got Holy Trinity and Nice. That's a big one. All right, we head to yeah, St. Edwards tomorrow or Friday. We head to the top of the fifth. It'll be Alex Sosa, Lucas Glendenning, and Fano Cruz coming up. A suicide squeeze bunt. Open the floodgates to a five-run inning. And that's been the difference in this one. And Brevin Smith, first pitch offering to Sosa. He fouls that off the foot. I don't know if it caught. He's kind of hopping a little bit. We have activity in the Melbourne bullpen. Can't see who it is, but I hear the gloves popping. Yeah. The 0-1, or no, he's just warming up as Sosa. He's taking a couple of warm-up tosses, or uh, swings, I'm sorry, warm-up swings. Fouling that one off his foot. Trying to get some feeling back, and it may hit a nerve there on the foul ball. And Brevin Smith stays loose. It's gotten cooler. It really has. That's, that's, that's Hunter Turner warming up behind me. Melbourne quarterback. I think he's warming up. The 0-1, strike two, right down. Wickham Road. The 0-2, curve ball is high, and it's one ball and two strikes. Smith to Sosa, low and in the dirt, and the count's even up at two and two now. So two balls and two strikes. Nobody out here in the top of the fifth inning. Brev's thrown a lot of pitches tonight, which is why I suspect there is activity in the Bulldog bullpen. 
Smith rocks, kicks, and fires inside, and he has fallen behind Alex now, three and two. Alex tonight has walked and grounded out. What a beautiful curveball to get Alex Sosa for strike three. One out. And that'll bring up Lucas Glendinning. <laughs> the bench over here. These, these guys, man, they're brutal. I tell you, man. But they all play together, and they all, they all talk trash to each other. I know. Lucas Glendinning's first pitch is on the outside corner at the knees for strike one. <laughs> and that curveball has Lucas on the balls of his feet there, and it's 0 and 2. And Brevin right now is in a pitching zone here to the heart of the Hawks lineup. And Glenn Denning gets a piece of that. It's the pitch. And that one is lined into the gap, and that's going to get down and off the wall. Glenn Denning around first. And on his way in for a stand-up double. And the Hawks with a little something-something here with one out as Lucas Glendening gaps that one. And that'll bring up Fano Cruz. Smith has kept the heart of the, uh, from one through four tonight, five tonight, he's kept the heart of that lineup to two, four, 12. And Cruz pops it up. And is it playable? Just gets over the fence over there as Winslow gives chase. Yeah, two for 12 on batters. One through five tonight. That's pretty impressive with this lineup. Malatino with a hit and Campbell there with the double. Glenn Denning with a lead, the pitch to Cruz, low and inside and down to second and into center field, but not far enough as Jake Richardson is backing up on the throw from Jake Weatherspoon and Glenn Denning stays at second. I might have, I, if that's me, I'd probably try to force a throw there just to see. Try to create something there. High and inside. To Fano. They've taken down all the pitch numbers on the scoreboard for some reason. And this one. Caleb, what a backhanded grab by Caleb Brown. Good job, buddy. Two balls and two strikes, and Caleb's back at the camera again. You saw that one scorched by. Caleb didn't even blink an eye and diving for it. The 2-2 two -two from Smith to Cruz. And Fano wasn't sure whether he wanted to swing at that one or not. He eventually does and fouls it off down into nearly the Melbourne butt, uh, dugout. So we'll do it all over again. 2-2, two -two, Smith to Cruz. Glenn Denning at second. 5-1, Melbourne on top. Oh, the curveball again from Brevin Smith. 
Strike three, two outs. Five strikeouts now. And this will bring up Adriel Torres. Torres singled and has scored the only Hawk run after a stolen base the last time up. He grounded out to the shortstop. And as he likes to do, first pitch swinging, swings through it, strike one. You want to do the sixth? All right. That one is lined into center field, but Richardson's with a track and a haul, and that'll be the third out here in the top of inning number five. Actually, I'm going to hand it over to you now as uh, we head to the top or the bottom of the fifth inning, and due up is Anthony Velez, Jake Richardson, and Bryson Ayala for the Melbourne Bulldogs. They lead it 5-1. to one. All right, again, we'd like to thank Anchor Plumbing. For all your plumbing needs, give them a call at 321-848-1196 or find them online at brevardplumbers.com. I was like, thank W&J Construction. For the Bulldogs here in the bottom of the fifth. Velez, Richardson, and Ayala all coming to the dish this inning. First pitch in there for strike one. It's Wicker delivers strike one. Kicks. Swing and a miss four, strike two. Anthony Velez quickly staring down. An 0 2 count. And on three straight strikes, Wicker gets the strikeout and will bring up to the plate. Jake Richardson. Richardson last time up. Walked, nope. Grounded out to the pitcher. And that one is ball one with one out here in the bottom of the fifth. Richardson awaits the 1-0. Strike one. Count is one and one now. And 
Richardson will be hit by pitch. And Bryson Ayala coming to the dish. And Ayala is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Or 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. So. And Wicker's going to test Richardson over there. That one will be fouled down the first base line. For strike one. One out. Richardson over at first base. And they throw back over. That one almost got away there. Got to be careful throwing that ball around. I welcome Coach Hughes. That one high for ball two. Count is two and one with one out. Richardson over on first base. Has been thrown over to about twice this at bat. And there's a third time, gets back in time. Wicker waits back over to first. And once again, back there safe is Richardson. Scoreboard says count is one and one, so that's what we'll go with. And Richardson will take off to second. The throw down. Richardson will be safe on the stolen base. And that's now four stolen bases on the night. Wicker. The one two count. One out, runner in scoring position now. And that one is going to get past. That one bounces in the dirt. And Richardson now advances to third. <laughs> and after being walked, that one is strike two, count is two, two and two. So after being hit by a pitch, Richardson has stole his way to third. Check that, that was strike three. So Ayala will strike out there. Jake Weatherspoon coming to the dish. And we'll take ball one. Last time up, Weatherspoon. He grounded out to the shortstop. And that is ball two. Wicker steps off the mound and it's going to come.
comes back to the play. Richardson dances into your screen. And it's ball three. And that one's going to be chopped over and get out. That'll be an RBI single for Jake Weatherspoon. And the Bulldogs now up six to one. Great piece of hitting there by Weatherspoon. Next up is Dillard. There for ball one. And that one knocked down. And he is safe. That'll be an error. Weatherspoon will advance to sec to second. That that's an E one. So Dillard reaches first, all with one out. Jackson Hall now comes to the plate, and he'll look at strike one. Two outs. Wicker trying to get out of this inning. Runners on first and second for Hall. Thought about going in Sosa. Pop up great throw, unfortunately, just not able to come up with it. Runners remain at first and second. Hall waits, and he'll swing for strike two. 0-2 oh, count. Two outs, two on. Can Wicker get out of this inning, only allowing the one run, or will Hall be able to do more damage? The 0-2 oh, pitch, that one low for Ball one. Tried to get him to chase that one low down there. Count is two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And that one will be a grounder. And that one's gonna miss. Here's your play at the plate. And that's gonna go down as an RBI. And Weatherspoon will come in to score. Dillard to second.
Next up to the plate, William Chandler. And he'll look at ball one. Yes. That's what I have that one marked down as. Chandler. Last time he was up, he struck out, and he's been walked. And there's a chopper foul. Count is one and one. Two outs. Melbourne showing some impressive two out hitting here. Score is seven to one. Hey, I'll make the adjustment on the scoreboard here in the bottom of the fifth. And Sosa tried to frame it. He liked it. The umpire did not. And it's two and one now with two outs. Wicker comes two. And that one's going to be popped up. Over to first base, four out number three, but not before the Bulldogs put two more runs on the board as we head to the top of the sixth with your score, Melbourne seven, Vieira one. All right, folks, we are back here for the top of the sixth inning. Hawks got work to do. Do up this inning. Ryan Lewis, Cameron Simpkins, and Dominic Leone, the three that are scheduled to come to the plate. Leading off the inning will be Ryan Lewis. Tonight, Ryan is one for two with a single. He awaits the pitch. Strike one as he looks at it go by. Bryson Smith. Now having a chat with Weatherspoon. Lewis awaits the 0-1, that one. Chop back to the pitcher, tosses it over to first four, out number one. 
a small dribbler to the pitcher. Goes down as a 1-3. Next up to bat, Cameron Simpkins. Last time Simpkins was up. He foul tip to fouled it backwards to the catcher and he is one for two tonight with the base hit and Simpkins waits and that one is sailed out to center field but there, there to make the out line straight out to the center fielder And there's two quick outs. Dominic Leone, Richardson, after being hit by a pitch and scoring in the last half inning, records out number two. And check that, it's actually number two. Cole Smith taking some swings as he'll look at strike one. Bryce Smith, swing and a miss. Quickly down, 0-2 is Cole Smith. Swing and a miss four, strike three, three up, three down. We head to the top of seven with your score. Melbourne seven, Vieira one. Bottom of six, sorry. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Again, we'd like to thank our sponsors, WJ Construction and Anchor Plumbing. Information has been on the bottom of your screen all night long. Do up this inning here for the Melbourne Bulldogs, Bevan Smith, Lawrence Wilson, and Anthony Velez. Bevan Smith, Brevin Smith is one for two tonight with a single. Came around and scored back in the second inning. Last time he was up, he was struck out. And Wicker comes back on out. Actually, that's Confreda. We have a new pitcher, Brennan Confreda, in for the Hawks.
pitch. Going in there for a strike, says the umpire. And Brevin Smith, wow, what a catch by Ryan Lewis. Ryan Lewis with a catch, because if he doesn't make that one, that one is going to land fair. Lawrence Wilson coming to the bat. Wilson's previous he is 0 for 2 tonight. And he will look at strike one. Flew out to Malentino and struck out in his two attempts. The 0 1. And that one in the dirt. As the dugout continues to be rowdy. Confreda. And that one's going to be hit up the middle for a single. Lawrence Wilson with a single. And a beautiful piece of hitting there. And next he'll bring up Anthony Velez. And the, and the car's been successfully moved. Will that prove to be a good move on us? We'll find out on the next episode of Brevard Prep Baseball. <laughs> Velez, last, last time up. Struck out. He struck out as he looks at strike one. 7-1, Bulldogs on top here in the bottom of the sixth. Confreda. Yes. I, I I do apologize. It it was Winslow, Lawrence Winslow, not Wilson. And I again I do apologize. One ball, one strike, one out. Runner on first. Confreda. And a swing and a miss for strike two for Velez. We await Confreda checks on the runner to the plate. That one low for ball two. Yep. Confreda looks the two two. Swing and a miss for strike number three. And and we head back to the top of the lineup for the Bulldogs. Jake Richardson was hit by a pitch last time up. He ended up coming around to score that last half inning. Two outs, runner on first. Confreda fires the first pitch, strike one. Richardson trying to seal his case for player of the game. <laughs> and I mean, he had that bunt that, that 
has scored three runs. As that was strike two, quickly down 0-2, two outs. Revan Smith, Smith definitely in the conversation for player of the game. And that one will be dribbler to second, steps on to second, four out number three. So four up, three down as we head to the top of the seventh with your score, Bulldogs seven, Hawks one. All right, thank you very much, Caleb Brown. Caleb doing it all tonight, camera scorekeeping and uh, diving for ground balls tonight, making spectacular stops. So thank you, Caleb, for all of your hard work as we head to the top of the seventh inning. And if you hadn't paid attention to this series, if you have paid attention to this series, then you probably would have guessed this to be the outcome tonight a Bulldog win because for the last 10 meetings, these two teams have split three games or uh, five games each. They have won, and we get a – is this a new Bulldog pitcher? Yep, yep. All right, just wanted to make sure that he wasn't on the mound while I was making my two-mile trek to move the car. Uh, on the bump now for Melbourne is going to be number 15 and I got to look at my uh the lineup on Max Preps isn't anything the close to being right. It's going to be Ty Keeley and Keeley uh he's 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 had a great year uh on the bump so far uh this season. Keeley with a 0 0.41 ERA, he's 3 and 0. It's going to be his fifth appearance of the season and uh in terms of what he's done, seventeen innings pitched. He's allowed seven hits, one run. It was earned. He's walked six and struck out seventeen. So Keeley, not obviously in a safe situation with a six run lead, but uh he will face the top of the lineup here in Malatino Campbell. And Sosa, and I tell you, the, the, the thing tonight, I see Chris Smith and Michelle McDean, everybody comment. The thing tonight for the Hawks is one thing. The inability to field the baseball tonight is what cost the year Hawks. And, you know, even on that bunt, uh, the suicide squeeze, it was the errant throw. And then, the, you know, prior to that, the throw down to third base, not – it's just the, – the Hawks just threw the ball around tonight and didn't field it very well. And a team that came into the game with a 947 fielding percentage that had committed just 19 errors all year has committed four of them tonight. So that's the big difference in this one. And the Melbourne Bulldogs are simply too good of a baseball team not to capitalize, and they've done so tonight. And Brevin Smith with an outstanding job on the night. Brevin's not an overpowering pitcher, but what he does very well is he changes speeds and locates his pitches, and he did that very well tonight as that ball is lined down the third base side foul on the count will go to one ball and two strikes. And Vera left another you – know, Vera left a lot of runners on base tonight. Brevin got out of a couple of situations, a bases loaded situation. Two runners on. So, Vieira's left a lot of runners on tonight. Melbourne, again, you just, they're too good. Too good. But these two teams shall meet again once, if not twice. Ayala deep in the hole. And he won't get Malatino, who will have a leadoff single. But if there's one thing you can be sure of, is that these two teams will play in the district championship game, and that's no disrespect to anybody else in 6A8. But uh, I don't know who will be the one seed. I don't know who will be the two. Coming into this game tonight as Luke Campbell steps up, as Luke Campbell uh, steps in, coming into this game tonight, this week's FHSAA rankings had Vieira 1 in 6A Region 2, number one. They had Landa Lakes, the butter team, in uh, the number two spot, and Melbourne had fallen to three. Obviously, this win for Melbourne tonight should change 
that top three in some semblance of order. If not, move, if Landa Lakes goes undefeated this week, then you would have to think they would jump into the top spot in the region with Melbourne moving into two and Vieira moving into three. And Richardson is not going to get the speedy Malatino, or I'm sorry, Weatherspoon is not going to get the speedy Malatino on the wild pitch. So, and then the other thing tonight, too, was, you know, the call on the suicide squeeze. When you want to get that edge over a rival, you, you, you do something sometimes to make things happen. And like you said, Caleb, it wasn't on the bingo card with bases loaded. And, the, the, and, and Jake Richardson up with, you know, to lay down a, a suicide squeeze. There's a ground ball, Ayala. Hits him in the jaw, and that's going to be an E6 on the bad hop. And now it's first and third with nobody out. And Alex Sosa coming up. Hawks need six here. Not over yet, so don't go anywhere. You know, again, these two teams have split each of the last 10 games. And, you know, I think the thing to remember, too, as we discussed earlier, the team that has won the district championship, I think, in the last four years has lost in the regional semifinals to that other team. So last year, Melbourne went on to the final four after defeating Vieira at SA Stadium. Pitch high for a ball. One and O oh to Alex Sosa, who struck out, grounded out, and walked tonight. That's a strike at the knees. And again, Brevin Smith held the heart of this order, one through five tonight, to a two for 12. That's pretty good when the team's coming in, batting what Vieira was doing. And then when you can chase a, an athlete like Lucas Glendening in the second inning, you've, you, you've done something. Two balls and a strike now to the future Wolfpack. Commit. And I'll tell you what, Ty Keeley that time revved up and threw that one. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Runners at the corners here. Top of the seventh inning, 7-1 seven to one, Melbourne on top. Five in the second, two in the sixth. Adriel Torres has scored the only Hawk run of the night. Sosa gets under it, skies it into right field. As Dillard calls, calls. Oh, that ball, the wind took it. Absolutely took it. We mentioned two innings ago, Caleb, how bad the wind has gotten here tonight, and it is breezy, and that is a long, long single for Alex Sosa as Jack Malatino scores, and it's 7-2. to two. Still nobody out, and Melbourne, I think you got to calm yourself down here, and that's exactly what they all appear to be doing. So Malatino led off with a single and error on Bryson Ayala. A fly ball that looked like it was going about 280 feet and actually went about, by the time the wind was done with it, about 110. Lucas Glendinning steps in. He grounded out, walked, and doubled his last time up. Kyler Dwiggins, did he come on for Alex? We'll see. And Glendinning. This is an opportunity. Flip the Ayala for one over to first. Double play. Textbook. Four, six, three. As Brevin Smith flips to Ayala over to Winslow. And in a blink of an eye, there's two outs here in the top of the seventh with Campbell standing at third. That's a butte right there, Clark. And Fano Cruz is... 
The Hawks' last hope here. The old textbook 4-6-3. Curve ball is high for a ball. Good turn there. Good turn. A little more of the catcher and the ump, please. Caleb? Okay. And that'll be on the outside corner. But the umpire says too far, and it's ball two, two and oh. I'd like to thank everyone watching here tonight. Jeff Meyer, Kathy Patrick, Shannon Santiago, Carol Lewis, Mike Moffitt, Big Mike Moffitt, Bryson Weeks, Kinley Dravis, Chris Smith, Aurora Gonzalez, Jeff Versick, Chris Smith again, Tommy Parrott, Adelso Lopez, Michelle McDee, Mike Ferry, Billy Martin, John Staples, and everyone else that tuned in tonight. As Keely Rocks kicks and fires. Oh, drills Fano Cruz. And now first and third again with two outs now as Adriel Torres will step in. That's a curveball that just did not curve. We'll record the WJ uh, Construction post game show and hand out our anchor plumber, plumbing plumber player of the game tonight. We started something new tonight. We're going to be giving away Brevard Sports Network gear tonight. We're going to be giving away a hat to our player of the game tonight. So, got a lot of hats in. I want to thank Matt Lawson for that. Matt in charge of our uh, our gear for BSN, and we're going to have a lot of it. Visors, hats, T-shirts, and, of course, it'll be awfully affordable. One and O, oh, Keeley, and this ball is fouled. Uh-oh. Okay, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> uh, that went exactly where I moved the car to. And the count is now one ball and one strike. So with a win, the Bulldogs would move to 12-1. and one. It'll drop the Hawks to 13-3. and three. And it'll be Vieira's first loss to a Brevard County team this year. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate that. One ball and one strike. Keeley to Torres. Curve ball is chest high and outside and two and one. You certainly don't want to lose Torres here because that would put the bases loaded and still not the tying run at the plate, but it would put the tying run in the hole. No matter how you say it, Keeley might just be trying to work himself to a save. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> two balls, two strikes, and two outs. The wild, the turn card pitch of the night coming here in the top of the seventh. Will it be the final out of the game or ball three or something else? Curveball is outside. Full count now. Three and two. And Fano Cruz will be off and going. Double D says the winds are gusting 15 plus in right field. Strike three, and the Melbourne Bulldogs win it seven to two. Your winning pitcher is Bryce or Brevin Smith. Your losing pitcher is Lucas Glenn Denning. The uh, Melbourne Bulldogs move. To 12 and 1. The Hawks will drop the 13 and 3. Still don't know who our player of the game is going to be tonight, but stay tuned to Brevard Sports Network uh, tomorrow morning as we run the post game interviews tomorrow. This series, again, for the 11th straight time, a team in this series fails to win two in a row. Want to thank our sponsors tonight, WJ Construction and Anchor Plumbing. So for Caleb Brown, for uh, 
staff and administration here at Melbourne High School. Athletic Director Chad Raymond. I'm Alan Slaughterzinski. Once again, your final score, the Melbourne Bulldogs 7, the Vieira Hawks 2. Have a great night, everybody, and, well, you know the drill. Make it a sports night.